Brett O'Callaghan, and I'm going to be sharing with you today about time management. How many of you guys struggle with managing your time? I do. We all do, right? The funny thing about time management is we actually don't manage time. Time is finite, so there are only 24 hours in a day. What we can do is we manage our priorities within the time that we do have within one day. To understand time management, we have to know the time management priority matrix. So this matrix is made up of two axes, one importance and the other one urgency. Everything we do comes down to whether it is urgent or important. And the way that we categorize and we prioritize what we need to get done first is based on where our tasks fall on this matrix. So, on the y-axis, we have actually importance. So we have low importance and high importance. And on the x-axis, we have urgency. So we have high urgency and low urgency. So let's somebody give me an example of something that's really, really urgent and important that you do in a day. A meeting. A meeting. OK. So a meeting, let's say, at 9 AM? OK. So a meeting at 9 a.m. is going to be both urgent and important. And the way that we categorize urgency and importance, with urgency, we start with, does it have a time limit? So a meeting is a perfect example because there's a time limit of 9 a.m. for the meeting. We can't be late, so we know that that is very high urgency. Also, with a meeting, that's probably pretty important because it has to do with work, and usually there's multiple people coming together to spend time on something important to talk about. So most likely that's also going to be high importance. So anything that is both high importance and high urgency is going to fall into this top uh, quadrant, which is due, due first. So this is going to be your number one priority as far as your task list. Once we place all of our tasks within the different quadrants based on urgency and importance, Sorry, am I late? Yes, you are late. We started a half an hour ago. It's okay, please join us. Not a problem. As I was saying, Sorry. once every single uh, task that we have is in one of our quadrants, it then tells us whether we're going to do it, delegate it, delay it, or drop it. Does anybody have any questions thus far? No. No. You good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you just joined us. Do you have any questions? I'm sure you have some questions about what we're talking about. Uh, no. We're good. Okay. All right. So, let's go back to that meeting that we were talking about. Right. Well, I'll just go ahead and make it. Yeah. I gotta go, actually. I'm so sorry, I apologize. I'm so late. There was traffic and um, don't worry about it. I'm here, I'm listening. Go ahead. Okay. You proceed. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, what have you been up to as recently? I've been good, just you know, busy with school and work. Oh, really? Uh, what kind of work have you been into lately? Actually, I've been really busy with school and work, and I've been really looking forward to uh, looking into my real estate license. Oh, what a coincidence. Uh, I actually just got my real estate license a couple of months ago. I actually carry my card with me everywhere I go. Yeah, if you have any questions at all, you could always reach out to me. I can tell you the whole process of getting your license or getting uh, started with any of that. Wow, that sounds great. Oh, thank you for the card. Of course, it was great seeing thank you. you. How to write a resume. There is information we should and shouldn't include. We should always include our name and contact information, all of our work experience and education. 
Some optional sections for a resume are objective. If you do choose to use an objective, be specific to the job and company you're applying for. Another section that is optional is key skills. This is where you highlight any special skills you may have, especially any transferable skills. Other ways to distinguish yourself as a candidate are including honors and awards, internships and externships, activities such as service clubs, volunteer charity work, and any leadership positions held, and emphasize skills learned and and that you improved in non-paid work. There are different ways to format resumes. The most common is chronological order, starting with your most recent job. Another common way is chronological order, starting with education, which is great for recent college graduates. There's a functional resume, which is usually organized by industry or job type. Good for somebody who is switching industries. And there is also a text only a web only resume format that is without any formatting. Some resume do's and don'ts. Make sure content's brief but eye catching. Use easy to read font like Times New Roman in 12. Use standard one inch margins. Don't use first person pronouns like I and my. And use fragments, not full sentences. After reviewing the resume, what are some don'ts you guys think we should not do in a resume? Um, I think it should be only about one page at most. We should have a font of 12, which I don't believe that resume does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. They actually has a font of 11. What else? Uh, the margin should not exceed one inch. That's a good one. I, I think, think this one's actually narrow. I think it's like half an inch. Yeah, it's kind mm-hmm. of. Yeah, we're good at it. Great. I do. Thanks. Refrain from using 